Hey guys, welcome back to Real Housewives Recaps. Today, we're talking Carrie Diaries. So a couple of you guys had asked that I recap this, and I actually did it on my Patreon. And so I just thought I'd release the first episode here from Out Behind the Paywall, so you can take a listen, see if you like it. I'm going to be totally honest with you. I really enjoyed it for the first, like, I don't know, five, six episodes, and then it just kind of got boring as you know what for me. So <laughs> I ended up quit recapping it, but the first couple episodes were fun. I did really enjoy the music and I thought the actress was it Anna Sophia Robb that played. Carrie did a great job. So I just thought I'd put this out for you to enjoy. I hope you do and check out my Patreon if you're interested. It's uh, patreon.com backslash real housewives recaps. Now enjoy this recap. Thanks. Hey guys, welcome back to Real Housewives Recaps. Today we're talking the Carrie Diaries. Thank you so much for being a part of my Patreon. I sincerely appreciate it. If you signed up for this level, I promised you some Carrie Diaries. Now I've never seen this before, but I am so excited to get into this and to recap it. I just watched the first episode. I actually really enjoyed it and I'm excited to be here talking about it with you. So whether you've seen it and you know what I'm talking about, or if you haven't, we can break it down and talk about it. And I want you to know on this level, I will be talking things Sex and the City adjacent. So if there's another show that you want to talk about that has anything to do with Sex and the City or not, just let me know and I'm down to talk. For now, we're talking Carrie Diaries. So let's just talk on the outset here. So it's Carrie, right? It's young Carrie Bradshaw. This actress is Anna Sophia Robb. We've seen her in all kinds of things. She's been in lots of stuff from Soul Surfer to Willy Wonka to that Dr. Death series. So we find out Carrie is having repeated dreams about being in Manhattan, but she's growing up in Ca Castleberry, Connecticut. So we find out pretty quick that she's living at home with her dad and her sister. Her sister's name is Dorrit. That's such a weird name, Dorrit. And she they've lost her mom, unfortunately, to cancer. Now what's interesting is back on the the actual Sex and the City series, she refers back in one of the episodes and says that she grew up with her mom and that her dad quit the family when she was young. Her sister, Dora, is played by Stefania Lavie Owens. I hope I said that right. She's a New Zealand actress. She has been in things like Krampus, The Lovely Bones. So we find out it's 1984. Their mother passed about four months ago. Again, they're living with their father and they're fighting a lot. So we see a lot of this is just how they're each handling the passing of their mom. Carrie has stepped more into the, I guess, motherly older sister role. And her sister is rebelling, hence all the crazy eye makeup. So dad is played by Matt Letcher. He's in The Flash. He played, <laughs> I'm never going to say that right, Eobard. And he was in Will and Grace. He played James Wise. So Carrie explains that it was always a tradition of her mother to take her clothes shopping right before school starts. And she can't start this year off without that. So her dad lets Carrie into her mom's sacred closet where they really haven't touched anything since she passed. She calls it a life dedicated to her. They've been forbidden to go in there, but she ends up picking a pair of sunglasses. She'll be super careful with them, and that's what she's taking to school. So we start to see the dynamics at school. Carrie doesn't fit in. There's like this weird clique that are the popular girls. They kind of hang on Carrie because they think, they literally say the thing, that they think the loss of her mother makes her way more interesting. But then she said, there's my people, my best friends, who love me no matter what. So the girl on her right seems to be her best friend. She calls her mouth Mouse, but we find out her name is Jill Chin. Now this is played by Ellen Wong, and if she looks familiar, it's because she played Knives on Scott Pilgrim. I just really like that movie. She also was Jenny on Glow. The girl on the left is Chloe Bridges. She's in Game Over Man. So we find out that there is a new kid at school. His name is Sebastian Kid. I kid you not. He's been kicked out of three other boarding schools, and so now he's there, and he walks up to Carrie and says, hey Bradshaw, I heard about your mom. That's a real bummer. So they obviously know each other, and we'll find out how in a little bit. Sebastian is played by Austin Butler. He was in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. So we see Carrie and her friends at some sort of study hall or library. She finds out her friend Mouse met somebody. His name is Seth Glassman, and they hooked up. They had sex. So the whole talk around the table is that she's lost her virginity and everybody else has, but Carrie is the last virgin of her friends. So while they go long-winded here, I want to take the opportunity and say there's things I like about this show so far. I like 
where they're going with this in terms of it is kind of Carrie like we do see her interested in writing and fashion and designing fashion almost like making her own fashion we see the curly hair we see her interest in Manhattan they definitely were on the nose with some of the character traits the other thing I like about the show is that they play great 80s music so even if you don't like the show it's kind of fun to listen while they play that music so she meets back up with Sebastian and we start to find out how they know each other We find out that his mom actually left the family for the tennis instructor. He calls himself a cliche. And, of course, her mom passed, so they have similar things about losing moms. They knew each other from last summer. He, They swam in some sort of public pool together, and he was going to kiss her. She got nervous, so she splashed him in the pool. Then they kissed. So it was her first kiss we saw. And they they were swimming together until she found out he's getting his own pool at home. She then got very worried she wouldn't see him again. And turns out she was right because she didn't see him until he ended up starting at her school. So back at school, he asks her if she still swims. They're making small talk. She starts to ask him if he wants to go to this dance. But then out of the corner of her eye, she sees her dad. She has a panic attack because the last time she saw her dad at school was when, when her mom passed. So she sees him, gets nervous and dizzy and ends up collapsing so outside she starts talking to her dad and he basically had to go up there to meet with her guidance counselor they're worried about her so they're trying to figure out how they can help her again after this terrible loss how they can help her just feel better about everything so they came up with this plan that one day a week for school credit they worked out an internship Carrie gets to go work at her dad's friend's law firm. It's kind of a flimsy excuse, but it's a way to get her in Manhattan, right? So she's so excited about this. Back at the house, she talks to her sister, Captain Makeup. It says she needs the mom's purse for the internship. Carrie goes through the sister's room, Dorit, I can't get over that name, and she finds mom's purse and a whole bunch of other crap in it in a bear where the sister was hoarding things. She's upset because it's covered nail polish, Her sister says she didn't mean to, and Carrie says um, she did want to destroy it. She destroys everything, basically. So they're fighting still. And the sister, Dora, yells, you got everything from mom. The purse, the 16th birthday. I didn't get any of that. So it's definitely a sibling. We're going to see a lot of sibling dynamic. I get the feeling here. Uh, So Carrie assures her that mom loved loved her so much. Dora says, I'm glad that I ruined mom's purse because she's being a brat. So Carrie gets the idea, hey, I'll take some nail polish and I'll funky up this purse. If Dora wasn't pissed before, she should be pissed now because Carrie wrote her name real big on the purse. But I got to be honest, it's kind of fun, right? I mean, it looks 80s. If you're around then or if you're familiar with it, it looks 80s. It just looks fun. I actually like how they have Carrie dressing in this. You know, it's realistic for a kid and she's she's kind of made it her own style. So I, I'm digging it. Carrie goes into the city. Her dad's taking her. He talks about taking the train home. The assistant is going to make sure that she gets to the train safely. And she's going to go straight from the train to the dance, but she'll be home by her curfew. And so as she's going to the building, she's so excited to be in New York. Somebody bumps into her. She gets a run in her stockings. At the job, she's fall. She's falling around this high maintenance redhead this must be the friend of the dad's maybe i don't know but she's told you can go get stockings on your lunch break so but no personal phone call so i'm sure she won't break that rule at all right so she goes over to century 21 department store on her lunch break it's this funky 80s music it's lots of fun she's looking through everything and just just the excitement of it all and p.s this looks like the same place that mannequin was filmed i don't know if it is but it kind of looks like that right which would be ironic because that's the movie with kim Hall in it okay so she's going through and looking at these clothes when this really like high energy lady comes up and tries to grab her bag not to steal it but to look at it and we find out this is larissa and carrie shoves her away we find out Larissa is a photo shoot. She does, uh, she's a style editor. She does photo shoots and stuff. So they try on clothes. Of course, they have a montage of that. She wants to know how Carrie came up with the idea for the purse. She loves a purse. And Carrie kind of explains what's happening. She helps 
So from there, she ends up, it's a weird kind of plot where she helps that editor sneak something out of the store. I think it was the belt. She gives Carrie her card and says, meet us out later. You're fabulous. I'm talking like Samantha Jones. So on the phone with her friend, Carrie's not supposed to be on personal calls, but we find out that Sebastian called and asked for Carrie's number. She's going to call her house to see if he left a message on the machine. She calls the house. Of course, Dorrit is useless, takes the phone off the hook, sneaks out of the house. So then a really fun, completely 80s dress arrives for Carrie, and it says a hot dress for a hot night. Love, Larissa. She tells her boss that it's for a school dance because she doesn't want the boss to know because remember the boss kind of knows her dad. And the lady goes into a whole thing. It looks like a Madonna dress. I would never wear that to a dance. Blah, 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 you know. Okay, so Carrie says the dress didn't belong to, it didn't belong going to a dance. It belongs to go to this cool club where she meets up with her new friend Larissa and everybody else. She takes a cab out there. There's a convenient excuse why the redhead can't take her to the train station because of her kids. So she's able to sneak off and go do this instead of going to the school dance. She talks about what a stark contrast this place is to the world she comes from. And what's funny is they start playing the song Footloose in the background and Sarah Jessica Parker was in the original Footloose. So there's that little piece of trivia for you. So at the dance, we see that obnoxious girl try to grab on to the new guy, right? The popular girl that's kind of using Carrie. We're kind of flipping back and forth. Obviously, Sebastian is looking for Carrie. She's not there. Okay, so back at dinner, Carrie's pretending to be older. We find out that her mom used to kind of be into writing. This is where she starts to talk about it. She wrote into a journal, and she's trying to call her dad, I guess, to pick her up. She never gets an answer because, again, Dum Dum Sister took the phone off the hook. Her friend Mouse tries to call her guy that she was talking about, the one she slept with, and can't get an answer either. So Carrie's dancing. She has her first experience around two gay men. She thinks it's fantastic. She realizes it's almost midnight and she has to leave. Uh, She talks about having champagne and dancing and feels like after tonight she'll never be the same. She runs into her friend. They walk home together. He tells her how, uh, sorry, she tells him how wonderful it was. And they walk up on Sebastian with that girl from school. I believe her name was Donna. And she's the one that uses Carrie, like I say, for her sad story, the popular girl. So they appear to be smoking something. And he says that he didn't see her at the dance. She says, no, you didn't. I wasn't there. And he offers to give him a ride. And she said, nope, it looks too crowded in there. He says, nope, it's not what you think. And she says, I'll see you around. So good for Carrie. She's not taking his crap, standing up to, you know, the cool kids. So she keeps walking with her friend and says, I want to find my perfect person like Maggie is for you. And he says, um, we're not so perfect. And they kind of give a clue that he may be, he may be gay. They're not, they haven't really come out and said that because she had made a point of saying, I don't have any gay friends and he may be her gay friend. So Carrie comes home and when she gets there, she finds police at her door. She's freaking out thinking dad called the police on her, but that's not what happened. The dumb dumb sister took the phone off the hook and we saw that and snuck out of the house. Well, she doesn't even come home till the next day. And when she does, she's drunk. And she says, I tried to call, but the phone was off the hook. And Carrie's like, that's because you took it off the hook. Now, what bugged me here is dad comes down harder on Carrie for coming home an hour late past curfew than he does for the daughter that stayed out all night long and came home drunk. He makes a point to talk to Carrie and say how much like her mom she is and how much she reminds him of her. And she's grounded for the next two weeks. I want to know what happened to Dum Dum's sister who got drunk and stayed out all night. How long is she granted for? So we see that her friend Mouse comes over. She thinks that guy is breaking up with her. He hasn't called her in two days. She keeps calling him. She doesn't understand why he's not talking to her after sleeping with her. Carrie says maybe he's just studying. Um, and he, she says, how could he have sex with me and treat me like this? Some of the same issues we see actually come up in sex in the city, like doing dumb shit like that. So dad likes, he like softens up, I guess again, because dumb, dumb got drunk. I don't know. (laughs) Cry for help from everybody. And he lets them into mom's closet where it's been a shrine the whole time and lets them divide up mom's things. 
Carrie does a voiceover where she talks about life getting complicated. And I love the voiceover. Again, it's that Sex and the City feel. I like that they incorporated that as well. Carrie's back at the public pool. We see her swimming, and that's when Sebastian shows up. The friends, the popular kids, I should say, look down and say, oh my God, Don is going to be so pissed. So there's a touching voiceover about opening your heart and new beginnings. Then we go back to her house. She gets some of mom's blank journals in case inspiration strikes. And you guys, it's so cute because we get to see her again, becoming Carrie Bradshaw. She said the city's no longer a fantasy. It's real. I was, it was searching for me and who I was and who I want to be. And they play the song. Girls just want to have fun. And we see her strutting down the street in this, (laughs) this look that, you know, young Carrie probably would have worn. And then we see her sitting with her journal, you know, eventually it'll become a computer, but she's sitting in the window and writing her thoughts. So we see where it all began. And that's it for the episode. And I'm telling you, I actually really enjoyed it. I wasn't sure what to expect. I hadn't heard great things about it. And I knew that it was canceled after two seasons, but you guys, I enjoyed it. And we'll see where it goes. And I did read that online there's a pretty big petition going around to try to get a third season going. So some people really liked it. So that's it for this episode. You got to let me know if you want to keep going with this. I am totally down. If this is not your thing and you want to find another show that's Sex in the City adjacent, I'm down with that too. You just got to let me know in the comments and we'll figure it out together, right? So thank you guys so much for all your support. I really appreciate it. And I hope you have a wonderful day and I will talk to you again soon. Thanks again. Bye-bye.